A few months ago, I bought a 13-inch 2015 Retina MacBook Pro off of Facebook Marketplace. Now, this thing does need a few little things done to it, and I did get it for a really good price. So let's take a look. And here we have the 250 Australian dollar Retina MacBook Pro from 2015, a Mac that is around eight years old now. And it sure looks like it. For some reason, there's a sticker covering the outer Apple logo. Oh, and now I see why it was there. Somehow the logo underneath is cracked and I can't say I've ever seen that kind of damage before. And as you can see, the most glaring cosmetic defect this laptop has is the anti-reflective coating has started to come off. And this is a pretty known problem, and Apple at one stage was offering to replace the displays free of charge. However, that is no longer a thing. Today, uh, I've seen a few videos where people have used Listerine to clean the screen off. However, I've heard disinfectant wipes also work pretty good, so I'm gonna try that and leave the Listerine for my mouth. The other cosmetic defect is the charger itself, which we'll look into repairing later in the video. These are things you may just have to put up with when you're buying a really cheap Apple laptop, sadly. And before we take things further, let's use a bit of eucalyptus oil to clean the casing. As I frequently say, you never know what germs and bacteria are lying on the casing of a laptop, so it's worth giving it a wipe down at the very least. The design of these MacBooks has, in my opinion, aged very well, and I can guarantee most people wouldn't know you're using an older Mac. Practicality is also high, with little need for dongles since the port selection is decent. Thunderbolt, USB Type-A, and an SD card reader, all still very handy to have in 2023. When I went to pick up this Mac, the seller hadn't yet installed an operating system, but thankfully I brought an installer USB with me to test it out. 8GB of RAM and a 120GB SSD, which is thankfully upgradable. Now for the ultimate test, which household cleaning wipe does a better job at removing the anti-reflective coating, if at all. And before we get stuck into this MacBook, I'd like to tell you that today's video is sponsored by AG1, the convenient and simple nutritional drink that I've been using for several months now. It combines several health products into a tasty as well as nutritious drink. A single scoop gives you 75 essential vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics that help with immunity support and more. AG1 is dairy and gluten free, vegan friendly and can be used as a part of a keto or paleo diet. Every morning before breakfast, I've been having a cold glass of AG1. I've simply been using filtered tap water, but you could combine this with your favorite base liquid such as coconut milk or your favorite choice of nut milk. Shake or stir it up and you're ready to go. My partner and I have tried many other health drinks and this is by far our favorite. I had to start hiding my AG1 as she was using it all. As someone who honestly doesn't consume enough fruit and vegetables in their regular diet, having a fast and easy way to make myself healthier has been genuinely great. I've seen a noticeable improvement in the quality of my sleep, mental sharpness, and generally just having more energy throughout the day. AG1 is also NFS certified for sport and ideal for athletes both professional and not so professional like myself. But wherever you are in life and no matter what stage you are on your health journey, make it easier for yourself with a glass of AG1. Tap my link to get a year's supply of immune supporting D3K2 and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. You can't put a price tag on your own health. I've split the display down the middle, Sellies on the left, Strike on the right. I began by wiping down each side in a circular motion for about a minute without much force. At a glance, it appears as both products were doing a pretty good job, effortlessly removing the coating. And after wiping off the residue, the results appeared very similar. But it was safe to say that the Strike disinfectant wipes looked to have the edge, a cleaner screen. A huge improvement compared to the control, the unclean area under the tape. And taking a bit more time, I went over the surface and made an effort to remove every single bit of the reflective coating which required a considerable amount of patience, especially around the edges, which proved difficult. And it looks like the strike disinfectant wipes have done a fantastic job, very clean now, or so it would seem. Upon closer inspection, only the side that I initially cleaned using the Sellies wipes was completely free of the old coating, meaning if you had a choice of the two wipes, Sellies would be the obvious choice. And I gave the whole display one last wipe down. It's now looking so much better, almost completely spotless. And I didn't have to use crazy products like mouthwash to achieve this. So far, I haven't even opened the laptop up, which is usually one of the first things that I do. It was missing one of the screws, so I assume the original owner had opened it up for some reason. But oh boy, it's a really dusty Mac. 
This is caused by the air being pulled through the vents on the sides and forced upwards and out by the single fan. Later model MacBooks did away with this airflow design. The newer MacBook Airs, for example, have no airflow at all and are completely fanless. And before you go ahead and work on the internals of a laptop, make sure to disconnect the battery. So newer models won't get as dusty as this particular Mac, but those newer models can't have the SSD upgraded. While solid state memory is pretty reliable, I'll be putting in a newer NVMe drive using an adapter. To get access to the CPU, the fan and heatsink have to be removed. Given how dusty the rest of the system is, the fan and cooling fins don't look all that bad. I think it's fair to say that the CPU has been repasted at some point given how much is spilling out around the die, but oh boy is it crusty. And with the heatsink removed, the fan is now also able to come out. Removing the old thermal paste is pretty easy with some cotton tips and isopropyl alcohol. The paste is so dry that it is basically crumbling. And since there are no signs of any liquid damage and everything seems functional, I don't see any need to take it apart further. And I do say this a lot, but repasting your laptop's processes is super important to maintain reasonable temperatures and keep them running for many years. Inside the fan, it sadly isn't a dusty mess, much to my disappointment. It looks more like fine dirt particles as opposed to a buildup of dust. It's now looking like new again after a brushing, and I'm glad that replacing parts like this is pretty easy if they do fail. Now the repasting can begin. I also put a bit of paste on the north bridge, the smaller die surface, even though it wouldn't have come pasted when it was sold by Apple originally. An important thing to remember is placing the rubber airflow piece back on. Without it, heat wouldn't be dissipated as effectively. Moving on to the solid state memory, I'm going to take a 1TB NVMe drive out of my old 11-inch MacBook Air. Yes, this is one of those MacBook Airs that I got for free in that massive lot a few years ago. I'm swapping the drives between the two laptops, and I'll likely sell off the MacBook Air cheap with that 128GB SSD. And now the 13-inch MacBook Pro has a lot more fast flash storage. Here's something that may gross you out though. On the edges of the casing, there is a lot of gunk and what I can assume is dead skin. This stuff gets forced in between the bottom casing and the frame as you can see here. Don't use your laptops on your bare legs if you can help it. And with that done, the laptop is good to be pieced back together. The ports were a bit dusty, so I got in them with some isopropyl alcohol and an air pump. The last thing to do is cover up the damaged Apple logo. Using an original vintage Apple sticker is the Czech geek equivalent of opening an old bottle of wine. I could definitely have done a better job centering it though, but too late now. Now for the moment of truth. Does this Mac recognize the new solid state drive? It thankfully does and swapping it out with my old MacBook Air means that all my files and programs are ready to go. It has a high cycle count of 933, but a decent level of health remaining. In my opinion, it would be better to keep the current battery as replacing them is a challenging task since they are adhered to the frame. Repairing a damaged charging cable isn't really a good idea. There is quite a high risk that you'll short out your laptop. And you could totally use some heat shrink and try and put it over the damaged area of cable. However, getting a thin enough bit of heat shrink over the pretty big MagSafe 2 connector on the end will be quite difficult. You want the thinnest tube of heat shrink possible as it can only shrink so far. A piece that would fit over the connector is a little bigger than I was hoping, so I figured I'd do a test using a cable of similar thickness. A blowtorch or simply a lighter will get the job done. Clearly, it isn't going to shrink down far enough, so I added some electrical tape to the damaged area to thicken it up and provide a little more strength. A small section of tube was snipped off, run along the cable and shrunk down to fit over the tape. As an extra layer of protection to stop the damaged section from twisting too much, I zip tied each end. This ended up being neat enough and pretty strong honestly. The other option is if you've got lots of older MagSafe 1 chargers lying around is get one of these. It's a little adapter that adapts MagSafe 1 to MagSafe 2 and Apple sell this adapter for 15 Australian dollars. But how does this 2015 MacBook Pro compare to a base model M1 machine? In terms of weight and dimensions, they're similar, with the older model weighing slightly more. The M1 Mac is also ever so thinner. In terms of performance, the 2015 model has a 5th generation dual core i7 processor, which compared to the M1 is significantly slower. If you need performance and you're on a budget, the original M1 MacBook Pro is honestly an excellent device. 
Graphically, the older Intel MacBook does struggle to keep up with even the entry-level M1. Keep in mind that the M1 Mac is running an x86 compatibility layer to even run this benchmark, and it still scores four times as much. Since all the Intel MacBooks of this generation aren't very powerful by today's standards, I feel the portability factor compared to the 15-inch model makes the smaller 13-inch one a more compelling buy. The keyboard is excellent, and this was the last generation before Apple went to the objectively worse butterfly models. The 13-inch 2015 model has the best of both worlds and was the first MacBook Pro to use the Force Touch trackpad, meaning you can click anywhere over the surface. The Retina display, even without the anti-reflective coating, looks fantastic. This is also one of the last Apple laptops to have the light cut out for the logo on the back. And how good is that display all these years later? With around 400 nits of brightness and decent coverage of the sRGB color gamut, I think it's pretty good. The aging hardware does still allow you to play basic games. Super Tux Cart runs without issue. Old School RuneScape also runs well on here, which is to be expected. Minecraft is very much playable. Some of you have been asking where my Minecraft server went. Sadly, I had to shut it down due to a lack of players and security risks. If you just need a machine for watching videos and web browsing, this will do it with ease. You can install an operating system as new as Mac OS 12 Monterey, but I'm mainly using an older version for app compatibility. If you can find one of these cheap, they are an excellent little device. Making sure the battery is still good is very important. But if you need more performance and far superior battery life, a secondhand M1 MacBook is a great option if you want to spend a little bit more. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. The 13-inch 2015 Retina MacBook Pros are still renowned as pretty good laptops. Of course, some things can go wrong and hopefully this video can be useful if you're looking for one yourself. Best of luck and I hope you find one really cheap. And I'll see you in the next video.